In this video, we're going to start looking at sequences and series. A sequence is an ordered set of terms generated by a rule. That rule could simply be add 5 each time or multiply by 2 each time. We could even have an nth term such as 2n plus 1. A series is the summation of a sequence. So with a series, we just sum the terms of that sequence. We can say a general term of a sequence or series is given as a sub n or u sub n, depending on the notation used. The sub simply means subscript. In this video, we're going to look at recurrence relations or recurrence formulas. A recurrence relation defines a sequence based on a rule that links a previous term to the next. An example could be a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n squared minus 6. So what we can do is link terms in the sequence using this recurrence relation or recurrence formula. Let's put this into a real world situation. What I'm going to do is look at a fitness plan. So this is going to be my fitness plan and I'm going to run around a track. In week one, I'm going to do one lap of the track. So week one is going to be one lap. Each subsequent week, I'm going to double what I did the previous week and then add another one lap. So each week after, I'm going to double last week. So just writing this in, double last week and add one. And let's just put this here, add one more lap, one additional lap. We could write this now, additional lap. We could write this as a recurrence relation. We could say a sub n plus one is equal to two lots of a sub n and then we will have plus one. So what we're saying is that the next one is two lots of the last one plus one and we would say here that a1, the first term, is equal to one. So let's look at generating some terms in this sequence. So when n is equal to one, we're simply going to substitute in here and use this information. When n is equal to 1, substituting in, we can say a2. The second will be 2 lots of a1 plus 1. Well, that's going to be 2 lots of a1. Well, a1 is 1, so that's going to be 2 plus the 1, which is going to give me 3. If we look at when n is equal to 2, this is going to be the third week. Subbing in n is equal to 2. The third term of the third week will be 2 lots of a2, as n is 2. And then we're going to have plus 1. So this is going to be 2 lots of 3, which is going to be 6, plus the 1, which is going to give me 7. So we can see that these terms are forming. When n is equal to 3... We substitute n is equal to 3. That gives me a sub 4. The fourth term of the fourth week is going to be 2 lots of the previous one, which is a 3. That's simply subbing in n is 3 plus 1. That's going to give us 2 lots of 7, which is 14 plus 1. And that is going to be equal to 15. So we can see that week 1 was 1. We can see here that week 2 was 3. We can see that week 3 is going to be 7, and we can see that week 4 is going to be 15. And that's what we end up with. So, this is an example of a recurrence relation. The next term is generated from the previous term. Now, you might think, well, we can just see what that is anyway. The reason that I do this particular method of letting n be equal to 1, n be equal to 2, and so on and so forth, is that it keeps your working nice and easy. The reason being, if we had, for example, a sub n minus 1 is equal to 4 a sub n squared minus a sub n, 
then subbing in the values here for n is going to make it significantly easier than just to think the next one is two lots of the last one plus one. Again, we will see examples of this as we go. So you might think it's a little tedious and time consuming, writing n is equal to one, two, and so on and so forth. But simply now consider the conditions you're given for the formula and sub the values in. So let's go ahead and look at some of these. In question one, we're asked to find the first four terms for each sequence below. So here we've got a sub n plus one is equal to two a sub n plus one with a one being equal to three. So we're given now the first term just here. So all I'm going to do is put when n is equal to one. Now this is similar to the one we've just looked at. When n is equal to one, a two, all I'm doing is putting n is one, is equal to 2a1 plus 1, which is going to give me 2 lots of 3, which is 6, plus 1, which is going to give me 7. If we look now when n is equal to 2, we're going to have a3, I'm subbing in n is 2, that's going to be 2a, and then we'll have this value, which is going to be 2 plus 1. So that's going to be 2 lots of 7, which is going to be 14 plus 1, which is 15. So we can see this is actually pretty much what we just did. So n is equal to 3. So we'll have a4. That's going to be 2 lots of a3 plus 1, which is going to be 15 times by 2, which is 30, plus for 1, which is going to give us 31. So we can see now that the first four terms are going to be 3, 7, 15, and 31. And we've generated those. You might say to yourself, in an exam, I don't need to put a3 is equal to 2a2 plus 1. Simply sub these in. As long as you're showing adequate working, then you'll be given the credit. Okay, let's look at the next one, b. So a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n squared minus 2, where a sub n is equal to 1. So if we let n be equal to 1, we can see that a2 will be equal to a1 squared minus 2. So if we take this, that's a1 and square it, well that is going to be 1 minus the 2, that's going to give us negative 1. When n is equal to 2, we will have now a, 2 plus 1 is 3, and then we'll have now equal to a sub 2 or a2 squared minus the 2. So we can see now on here that I'm going to get negative 1 squared, and then we're going to minus this value of 2, minus 2 is going to give us now negative 1 again. If we now look at the next one, all we're doing is subbing in n is equal to 3. That's going to give me a4 is equal to a3, which we need to square and subtract 2. We can see from here that that is going to be this quantity here, and that's going to be squared, subtract the 2. It's going to be negative 1. So we can say for values of a1, which we're given as 1, we've got a2, which is negative 1, a3, which is negative 1, and a4, which is going to be negative 1. So we've simply now generated the first four terms. We're given the first, and then we need to find the additional terms. Okay, now this one, a sub n is equal to 3 minus 2 a sub n minus 1. And we've got a2 is equal now to 2. So this one is slightly more challenging. We've got n, n minus 1, and we've got the second term. We need to find now the first term. So if we have n is equal to 2, we can say that a2 is going to be equal to 3 minus 2. Then we're going to have a n minus 1, which is going to be 2a1. We can substitute these in here. We can see now that a2 is going to be 2. So 2 is equal to 3 minus 2a1. We can rearrange this. 2a1 is equal to 1. So we can see that a1 is equal to 1 half. So we found the first term. When n is equal to 3, substituting in, we're going to have a3 is going to be equal to 3 minus 2 lots 
of A2. So we can see this is going to be 3 minus 2 lots of A2, which is going to give me 4. We've got now 3 minus the 4, which is going to give me negative 1. When we have n is equal to 4, we can see from this now that A4 is going to be equal to 3 minus 2 A3. So we can say this is going to be 3 subtract 2 lots now of this quantity here, which is going to be negative 1. So that is going to give us now 5. So if we look, we've got the first term, which is 1 half. We've got the second term, which is going to give us 2. We've got the third term, which is going to give me now negative 1. So all I'm doing is substituting this in, negative 1. And then we've got the fourth term, which is going to give me positive 5. So that's what we end up with. So all I've done is simply subbed in the values, starting with n is equal to 2 as we've got a2 rather than a1. And this is why I say subbing in the values of n makes it slightly easier. Okay, let's look at d. We're given a sub n plus 2 is equal to a sub n plus 1 all squared minus a sub n. a1 is 1 and a2 is equal to 3. So quite a lot of information here. So if we let n be equal to 1, so when n is equal to 1, we're going to have a3 is equal to a2 squared minus a1. So we can see that a3 is going to be a2 squared, which is going to be the 3 squared, which is going to be 9, minus a1, which is going to be 1. So we can say that a3 is going to be equal to 8. When we have n equal to 2, we're going to have a4 is going to be equal to a, and then we're simply subbing in 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, we'll have 3, a3 squared, minus now a2. So substituting these in, a4 is going to be equal to a3 squared. Well, that's going to be six, uh, 64, which is 8 squared, minus now a2 a2 is going to be 3, so that gives us now that a4 is 61. So we're given the first 1, we're given the second 3, we found the third which is 8, and we've just gone ahead now and found the fourth which is 61. So that's what we need to do and simply generate those terms. So keeping on top of your values of n and substituting will allow you to access the answers. So that's forming a sequence given a rule. In question two, we're asked to write down a possible recurrence relationship for each of the following sequences. So this time we're working in the opposite direction. We're writing down the uh, recurrence relation that links the terms in these sequences. If you can see here, we're adding four each time. Don't think the, the temptation is a double, but we can see it's not. Add 4, add 4, add 4. So what we could say for the first one is a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n plus 4 with a1 being equal to 4. So the next one is going to be the last one plus 4. See, if we substituted in n is equal to 1, a2 would be equal to a1 plus 4, which we could see would give us 8. We could sub in n is equal to 2, a3 would give us a2 plus 4, and so on and so forth. So what we do is state the recurrence relation or formula, which is a sub n plus 1 is equal to a sub n plus 4, and we give a first term, a sub 1 is equal to 4. That's just one particular um, approach with that one. If we look at this one, 3, 6, 12, 24, well, that's going to be doubling each time. So we can say a sub n plus 1 will be equal now to 2 lots of a sub n, and we have a1 is equal to 3. So if we just consider when n is equal to 1, we will have on here, uh, we've got now a 
2 is equal to 2a1, and we can see that's just going to give us two lots of 3. We can see when n is equal to 2, we're going to have now a3 is going to be two lots of a2, and so on and so forth. So that's just writing down a recurrence relation that is, will generate the terms that we're given in this particular uh, these particular sequences. Now, of course, you could look at writing nth terms for each of these um, in a different form, but often we can only define a relationship with a recurrence relation. So that links term to term. So sometimes you won't be able to write what we call an arithmetic sequence of them or some other sequence. We just have to jump from term to term by using the rule. So there we go. That's a brief introduction to sequences and series. So remember, a sequence is an ordered set of terms that is formed by a rule. So 2n plus 1, 5n minus 3. A series is the summation of the terms in a sequence. And we've been looking at recurrence relations, which is a sequence defined on a rule that is linking terms previously in that particular sequence.